two Super Bowl championships alongside John Elway in Denver. It's a pleasure to welcome Mike back here to Germany. And Mike, last week, really for Ryan, as wild a game as they could have expected against Cologne, outplayed in really every statistical category, but the special teams put him over the top. Special teams definitely put him over the top. Whenever you get an opportunity to run two kicks back for touchdowns, it's imperative that your team win the football game, and the Ryan Fire did that. The only stat that bothers me is minus four in the turnover ratio. Whenever you're minus four, technically you should not win the football game, but special teams was the difference. Mike, specifically for Ryan offensively, they're going to need their quarterback tonight, Chad Hutchinson, to find a nice rhythm. Chad Hutchinson has to find a nice rhythm early. Opening series has to drive the team down and score. It's imperative for Chad Hutchinson and his confidence to perform well tonight. And Mike, meantime, Claymore's quarterback, Nate Hibble, the former Oklahoma star, last week played in his first game action in over two years. Last year, the third-string quarterback in Cleveland. And Mike, the Browns have allocated Hibble here very high on this young man. I think the Browns are high on him, and I'm high on Nate Hibble. I think Nate Hibble is a consummate pro. He prepares well, he has an excellent arm, and he, he has great movement in the pocket. I look for Nate Hibble to have an excellent game. Before we get into this, Scottish Claymore's Ryan Fire clash here in Gelsenkirchen, Germany. Let's quickly update you on some news from the British Senior League. Last year, the London O's broke the old London Ravens record for consecutive victories against British opposition when they came from behind to beat the personal assurance Knights. Last Sunday on the opening weekend of the British Senior League season, the Knights finally got the better of the O's with a 14-12 victory, thus ending the O's win streak at 67 games over the past seven years. Congratulations to the Knights. And there is a look at Cowboy Jack as he is affectionately known amongst his peers. Players that Bignell has coached over the years in NFL Europe, John Kittner, Leroy Glover, and Kelly Holcomb with the Cleveland Browns. And in college, at Boston College, the head coach, Doug Flutie. And on the other side, Pete Koharchuk, the head coach of the Ryan Fire, trying to put this Fire team to start the season with two victories as Mike Schaefer on to kick it away. The Scottish Claymore is winning the opening coin toss. They receive to start. It's Nick Davis through the 30-yard line, and Davis finally is tracked down, brought down at the 34-yard line along the near side. The stop made by Charles Drake. And so we get our first look at Nate Hibble, the starting quarterback for the Scottish Claymores. A look at what he did last week in Berlin, 17 to 24. Hibble sacked in that game a couple of times as the Scottish Claymore six-point losers in Berlin. First play from scrimmage tonight. Here in Gelsenkirchen, Hibble has time to throw. Loops it towards the near side. It's caught. And it's Nick Davis, who last week did not have a reception. And right off the bat, talked to Jack Bicknell and the offensive assistant, Sam Retigliano, yesterday. Talked about wanting to work Davis into this game. And they accomplished that right at the start. Backs and receivers, Galloway, Bellamy, Scott McCready, who had 11 receptions last week. Of course, Davis and Aaron Galladay, the starting tight end for the Claymores. After the pass play, it's first and 10 Scotland inside the Ryan 45-yard line. Three wide receivers sent. Galloway is the lone setback. Long snap count. Hibble gives to Galloway, and he is met right at the line of scrimmage. It's Randy Garner who wrapped him up. After a minimal gain, it'll be second and long coming up. We get a look at the starters defensively for Ryan Guthrie Killings, David Nugent, who had a big game last week, allocated by the Oakland Raiders. The linebacking core, one change. Terrence Robinson getting the start at the middle linebacking spot tonight for Ula Tuatelli. The defensive backs, Lukens, Moreland, Yancey, and Abdul Howard. Second down and 10. Flair pass, far side, it's Galloway in the backfield. Galloway breaking two and three tackles as he squirts his way inside the 40-yard line down to the 35. And he is very close to that first down marker. And Mike will see where they spot the football, the tackle made by Yancey. Third and short situation. Galloway takes the handoff, and Galloway appears as though he will have enough for the first down, and he does as he is brought down at about the 32-yard line. James Harrison among the tacklers defensively for Ryan. 
and it will be a first down situation for the Scottish Claymore. So exactly the way that Jack McNell wanted to start this football game after this offensive unit really struggled last week in Berlin. Three wide receivers set on first and 10 from the 33 yard line. Ryan showing blitz up the middle. Long snap count again from Bicknell. Good blitz pickup by that offensive front. The pass is caught. It's Scott McCready inside the 20-yard line. And we mentioned McCready's big effort last week in that loss in Berlin. 11 catches on the day for about 70 yards. Okay, here you go. Right here is a blitz pickup by number, number 30. Uh, excellent job of the pickup there on the blitz. Looking for the Scottish Claymores to come down the red zone and score. First and 10 situation. Galloway bounces to the outside inside the 20-yard line. A host of Ryan defenders there to make the stop. And Galloway, the guy who really struggled last week, Mike, a guy coming off major knee surgery about a year and a half ago, trying to work his way back into his rhythm. Well, Ahmad Galloway is, is a starting tailback here for the Scottish Claymores. I look to see... Ahmad Galloway run for 100 yards. Anytime you can get 100 yards on the ground as an offense, it definitely will help you win the football game. Galloway, former seventh round selection of the Denver Broncos, allocated here by Denver. Uh, Mike Shanahan, Mike's former team, of course, that pass off the hands of Galloway. So Ahmad has really been the featured offensive player here in this first drive. As that one falls incomplete, will be third and about seven coming up. Well, if we look on the replay here, we watch the right tackle, and that is uh, Chad Ward makes a decent block there, but the, the offensive line today for the Scottish Claymores must establish a new line of scrimmage in order for the Scottish Claymores to be effective. It's imperative that they do that. So a critical third down and seventh play. Lukens steps off the line of scrimmage. Again, Hibble now, the long snap count, audibleizes at the line of scrimmage. Here is Hibble, all day to throw the football. Pocket finally starts to collapse. Hibble is flushed out, and that one falls incomplete. That one intended for Nick Davis at about the five-yard line. That was great pocket awareness by Nate Hibble. He got a little pressure from the outside. He eluded the pressure, threw the ball to a receiver that he felt he could make. Great play, Nate Hibble. Unfortunately, they didn't make the connection, but great awareness in the pocket. Now Rob Hart, the English national, on to attempt a 35-yard field goal with Nick Murphy holding. Hart from the right hash mark. This one has plenty of distance, and it's through the uprights. The Ryan Fire trailing here at the start against the visiting Scottish Claymores three to nothing and talked about the special teams play last week from Ryan look at the kickoff return yards of course Mike the two touchdowns the reason why Ryan won that football game but Robert Freeman lost he's going to be out now the next four to six weeks he had that first long kickoff return what do you expect tonight because that's a big part of this team tremendous loss for the Ryan fire with Robert Freeman not being there but we have to pick up the, the slack with Willie Quinney, Shockman Davis, or even Adam Herzig that's going to return the football. Special teams is just as important as offense and defense. It's 33% of the game. There's a look at Chad Hutchinson, who, of course, started those nine games as a rookie with the Dallas Cowboys back in 2002. And last week, Chad really started well, played the first and second quarters in that victory against Cologne. And sat for what turned out to be the entire third quarter as Greg Zolman, the backup, was given an opportunity. And Chad never found that rhythm after he came back in the fourth quarter. We'll see how he fares here tonight. A three wide receiver set. Joffrey Reynolds, the lone set pack, takes the handoff from Hutchinson. And Reynolds out past the 20 yard line, up ahead to the 23 yard line. We get a look at the starters up front for the Ryan Fire. Chuck Claybo at the left tackle. Elisara, Grace, Kevin Breedlove. And Melvin Page getting the start tonight for Chris Zeman, who is suffering from an ankle injury. Zeman is dressed tonight and available in an emergency situation. Reynolds is the starter at the running back. Herzing and Willie Quinney and Shock Main Davis, the starters at the wide receiver position tonight. Man in motion is Daniel Wilcox. The pitch taken by Reynolds, trying to bounce it to the outside. 
And a good start for the Scottish Claymore's front four here at Gelsenkirchen. And we get a look, Mike, at the defensive starters for Jack McNell and the Claymore's tonight, who have jumped out to an early 3-0 lead up front. It's Flickinger, Cedric Scott, Alan Harper, allocated by the New York Jets. And Ivory McCoy, the linebacker core, J.J. Jones, Jimmy McLean, allocated by the Jacksonville Jaguars, a man with extensive NFL experience and a very impressive secondary unit for Jack Bicknell and the Claymores. A third and long situation. Hutchinson under center. Drops back, has time, fires over the middle, and he finds his tight end. It's Dwayne Blakely allocated by the Tennessee Titans. So Hutchinson showing some poise in that situation, able to find his tight end. Well, that's it's imperative that I talked earlier that the offensive line do well here. Now watch the off, watch the offensive line here create a U shape for Chad Hutchinson. It's um, it's almost a protection. He can, he, he can see everywhere he wants. There it is right down the middle to the tight end Dwayne Blakely. Great pickup, 10, 11 yards. Blakely playing in his second straight season as a member of the Rhine Fire. First and 10 for Hutchinson. He goes play action. Hutchinson all day to throw fires towards the sideline. He completes to Adam Herzing. And Herzing is knocked out outside the 45-yard line. So again, the Ryan Fire able to move the chains. Again, pass protection is essential here for Chad Hutchinson. It's crucial that the offensive line gives Chad enough opportunity and enough time to, to protect himself so that he can throw the ball. If I'm a quarterback and I'm a defensive lineman, I could make this pass with the protection that the offensive line is giving Chad Hutchinson. Hutchinson last week in the game, 8 of 14 for just over 100 yards passing at an interception and one touchdown throw. Reynolds again takes the handoff on first down. And in the early going, Ryan, not much success on the ground running the football as Reynolds is brought down just past the line of scrimmage. The tackle made by McCoy. Joffrey Reynolds is going to be the difference in this. He's going to, he's going to compliment Chad in this game. In, in order for the Ryan Fire to win, Jeffrey Reynolds needs to run the ball. The offensive line has to open holes. Jeffrey Reynolds has to look to get 100 to 110 yards today. Walter Williams, another player who is lost for this Ryan Fire team. Williams back in Birmingham, Alabama after suffering an injury last week, a broken hand. They will expect him to miss four to six weeks as he continues to rehab. Reynolds, again, the workhorse, the tackle made by the outside linebacker for Scotland, Ryan Myers. There's a look at Ryan offensive coordinator, Whitey Jordan. Ryan certainly wants to establish some kind of running game after really struggling in that category, at least at the start of that game, Mike, last week against Cologne. Well, and, and I mentioned it earlier. It's, it's crucial that they run the football. And in order to win a football game anywhere, you need to run the football. So a third and short situation for Hutchinson and Ryan on the 46-yard line. Hutchinson fires that went right through the fingertips of Adam Herzing as the coverage that time provided by Brad Franklin, the backup quarterback. And Herzing, a guy who has been shorthanded through training camp and over the first week of the regular season, that time inexplicably just drops it. Well, I, I think it was a poor throw by Chad Hutchinson. And again, third down efficiency has to be, you, you have to win on third down in order to win in the National Football League Europe or National Football League or college. Here is Brooks Bernard allocated by the Chicago Bears. On to punt it away on a fourth, about a half yard from inside Scotland territory. Nick Davis calling for a fair catch. And this one takes a bit of a ride bounce inside the 15-yard line. Down to the 14, and that's where the Claymores and Nate Hibble will take over possession. Leading this game here in Gelsenkirchen, 3 to nothing. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Both teams went on to swap punts, so we pick up the action on Scotland's ensuing drive. First and 10 situation for Nate Hibble and his Claymore's offense from about their own 22-yard line. Hibble feeling the pressure as he released, as it was David Thompson who got there about a half second too late, but that's the kind of pressure, Mike, you want from your interior lineman. That's huge pressure. All he did was dominate Morgan Pierce. Uh, he's property of the Pittsburgh Steelers, and the Pittsburgh Steelers aren't going to like what they saw there. This young man needs to establish a new line of scrimmage, uh, but, but great job by David Thompson. 
Uh, all he wants to do is make plays, he told me. I saw him in the hallway of the hotel. He wants to make plays. He wants to get a chance to play on Sunday. And doing that, he's going to get his chance. David Thompson allocated here by the St. Louis Rams. Won a national championship as a collegiate player at Ohio State back in 2002. Hibble again audibilizing at the line of scrimmage. Play clock out of three seconds. Hibble quick step drop. And he completes to his man out of the backfield. That's the tight end, Aaron Galladay. The Kansas City Chiefs allocated end. Tackle made by the outside linebacker, James Harrison. Well, again, here we have we have Hibble looking out for just a quick, quick pitch out here or a quick slant coverage. Great coverage by Harrison. Great catch by Galloway. But again, it's it's not a big gain. It's only three yards. Uh, that, that goes back to the nickel and dime philosophy here. So they call it a third and seven now as they approach the final minute of this first quarter. Pass caught again by the tight end, Galladay. And Aaron Galladay is brought down by about four fire defenders, but a half yard short of the first down marker. They'll spot it around the 33-yard line. And on fourth down, Nick Murphy is on to punt it away yet again for Scotland. Well, I'll tell you what. Pete Kaharchek's defense winning on third down right now. We saw Tony Lukens make a great, great tackle on Aaron Galloway to get off the field on third and short. Nice job, Ryan defense. Murphy on to kick it away. A booming kick. Willie Quinney has to sprint back and takes it from his own 15-yard line. Breaks one tackle, then Quinney is tracked down at about the 23-yard line, but a great kick that time from Murphy. Allocated by the Philadelphia Eagles last week at a 55 yarder in the loss against the Berlin Thunder. Well, I'll tell you what, Quinney here, it, Willie Quinney, he has to he has to have a big game. There, there's no question that he has the speed, he's got the hands, and he has to open up the game a little bit for the Ryan Fire. Uh, they're they're stuck on their 23 yard line now. Great field position for the Scottish Claymores, and if they can keep him down here. It, it, the, less, the best thing they can do right now on defense is to get off the field on thir uh, three downs. Uh, but to me, keeping the Ryan Fire pinned back on their own 20, 30-yard line, you can't win a football game that way. Now, it appears as though a penalty flag was called, so they're going to redo the punt here, it looks like. The Ryan Fire in a team huddle there around their coordinator at midfield. Nick Murphy is back out to redo the punt here. They have it spotted at the Scottish Claymore's 27-yard line. Game clock stopped at 34 seconds left to play on a Saturday night here in Gelsenkirchen, Germany. So Willie Quinney back out onto the field, standing at about his own 35-yard line. Look at the crowd here. Another great crowd on hand. Gels and Kirshen, this is a gorgeous state-of-the-art facility. Arena Alf Schalke seats better than 61,000. Low snap taken by Murphy off the turf. And this one a lot shorter. Quinney sprints up, takes it at the 45. Quinney blazing down the sideline. And it's Nick Murphy, the punter, who has to come out and make a touchdown-saving tackle at about the 30-yard line inside Scotland territory. Well, I'll tell you what, Spiro, we talked about field position earlier being pinned back. Willie Quinney answered the bell. Short kick, made something out of nothing. Here they are, they're, they're in plus territory, which is a bonus for Chad Hutchinson. I look for him to go up to the air uh, quickly, uh, stay off the ground. He, he wants to establish himself here. Chad Hutchinson, despite that win, you talk to him and just look at his body language last week. He was a frustrated player after the quick start he had sat for that third quarter as Greg Zalman, the backup, was given an opportunity. Never quite was comfortable from that point on in that final quarter. Hutchinson is here with a lot of pressure, really wants to prove himself. And, Mike, we talked about the situation with Hutchinson with the Cowboys. Of course, Drew Henson brought in about a month and a half ago. And Hutchinson knows that the urgency level is very high right now. Well, well Chad Hutchinson, like I mentioned earlier, is, is, is his best competitor and his worst competitor. He is so competitive that he wants to do so well he wants to play for the 31 other teams. He realizes his position in Dallas is, is kind of a tough situation. But Chad Hutchinson is a competitor. He's like you and I and everybody else out there that wants to do well. Uh, you know, Chad Hutchinson has to answer the bell, though. Chad Hutchinson have to, has to go out and execute and prove to the league 
into the 31 other teams that he deserves a spot on the roster. Chad Hutchinson about as unique an athlete professionally as there is out there. The only starting pitcher in the history of Major League Baseball to start a game as an NFL quarterback. Spent four years in the St. Louis Cardinals minor league organization. Had a brief stint with the Cardinals at the major league level back in 2001. Hutchinson gives to Reynolds on first down and Reynolds with excellent yardage as he approaches that first down marker at about the 25 yard line. Tackle finally made by Ivory McCoy and it is enough for a first down. Great call here by the offensive coordinator. Great call. Great call by the offensive coordinator of the Ryan Fire, Whitey Jordan and Scott Milanovic. 3-0 Scottish Claymore's lead as we start the second quarter. And you see that the roof has been closed here in Gelsenkirchen. It is raining outside. And Mike Lodish has been here in Germany only about two weeks, but he has major pull. And Mike, a guy who likes to keep dry, had his big pretzel before the game, decided that he wanted the retractable roof to be closed. Uh, you know, I had to make a decision here. And, and, and it might have been an executive decision, like a presidential order. But, you know, it was raining. I want to keep the field dry. I don't want guys to pull hamstrings. I don't want guys to get hurt. There's no reason for that. I had to. The weather has really been lousy here the last week or so. It has been raining the past five or six days as we start the second quarter. Hutchinson in the right offense again through the air as they find Reynolds out of the backfield. Jamie McClain, the middle linebacker, good coverage over the middle as Reynolds is dumped down at about the 20-yard line. Joffrey Reynolds just came out of the backfield and basically just came up, basically just came up and ran a crossing route here. Real quick, nice and easy, five yards. Just here we go, playing catch. And all playing catch means just out there throwing to the receiver and making things happen. Jimmy McClain, 15 games played with the Houston Texans as a rookie a couple of years ago last year. Took part in nine games during the regular season as penalty markers fly. And a false start penalty, it looks like here against Ryan. False start. 75 offense five yard penalty still second down our lead official tonight Walt Coleman sharing the call with the German fans here at arena of Schalke penalties can't have penalties penalties will kill you like turnovers will kill you and it, it's it's crucial that people the offensive line keep their head keep their poise and execute Look at Pete Goharchik there on the Rhine sideline after Chuck Claybo was called for the infraction. They set it up at the 25, a second and 10. Hutchinson fires a bullet and he completes to his man at Shock Main Davis inside the 15 yard line. And Davis has been quiet up to that reception. Well, this is what Chad Hutchinson needs to do. He needs to connect with Shock Main Davis and the rest of his wide receivers. There, here you can see him just setting up in the pocket, looking right at Shockmane Davis. Nice play, Shockmane, nice catch. Getting into scoring territory. Got to cash in if you're the Ryan Fire right now. Davis allocated here by the Packers last week. A couple of receptions for 40 yards. And, of course, that 93-yard kick return for the touchdown. Reynolds takes a hard hit. Just past the line of scrimmage as he approaches the 10. In time, James Lewis, one of the safeties coming up to lay the wood. I'm going to tell you something. This is what defense is all about. Anytime you get your, sa your safety coming up there, your strong safety, watch Reynolds right here. Just lay the wood right on top. Reynolds, get Reynolds gets laid out beautifully here by James Lewis. That's great defense in the red zone. That's stingy defense. And you saw Lewis tell him about it at the end of that play. Inside of 13 minutes left to play in the second quarter. Hutchinson takes a hit. A penalty marker is thrown. A free play for Hutchinson. It's going to be illegal hands to the face or a face mask that time. As it was Ivory McCoy who came from the blind side and inadvertently, Mike, that hand of McCoy went into the face mask of Hutchinson. Well, all he's trying to do here is just get a sack. He's trying to get free. He's trying to do anything. Listen, I don't fault Ivory McCoy for this because he's just hustling, trying to play football. It will be a face mask, and it's a bad penalty against the, the uh, Scottish Claymore defense. Personal foul, grasping the face mask, 90, defense. Half the distance to the goal, automatic, first down. So Chicago native Ivory McCoy whistle. It might take us through. All you see, you can't really see Ivory McCoy coming, but he's trying to beat Clayball here, which he really didn't beat Clayball. The outside arm, he tried to grab the shoulder pad, but missed, grabbed the face mask again. Good hustle, good hustle, but bad penalty, especially in the red zone. 
So they'll spot the football at the Claymore's six-yard line. Substitutions now defensively for Scotland. Jermaine Chapman is out. And Alfonso Roundtree is into the game now on first and goal from the six. Long snap count from Hutchinson gives to Reynolds. Bowling his way straight up the middle right at the goal line. No call from the officials, and they will spot it inside the one. But how about that push from that offensive line and then the run from Reynolds? Well, the surge is everything. The offensive line has to open up holes for Joffrey Reynolds. And we saw Reynolds' legs. They're like pistons, like a 357 Magnum bullet. Let's watch the push here on, on the replay here. Let's watch the offensive line right here. Get a nice surge in the, in the middle of the defense. On second down and goal, Reynolds takes the give. Reynolds now bounces down to the outside, a wide open field, and Reynolds is into the end zone, touchdown! So Jeffrey Reynolds didn't have much working on the right side. Mike decides to skip it to the opposite side of the field, and he had a whole lot of real estate to work with. Well, I'll tell you what. They started out to the right, and he cut back against the grain. Not true cut back, but cut laterally back. Anytime you've got the speed that Joffrey Reynolds has and the ability to move laterally, he created a play. And that's what this, this league is all about in any league. It's about creating a play. A play. German national kicker Ingo Andenbrug last week, three of three on point afters. Converts the extra point and the Rhine fire with its first lead of the game. Welcome back. Both teams swapped punts and the Claymores were forced to punt again. And so right now we pick up the action on the Rhine fires ensuing drive. Chad Hutchinson back into the game. And that pass intended for 20 jarred out. They're going to roll it incomplete. A great hit right after the catch. It was Alfonso Roundtree who laid the helmet on 20 that time. Well, right here we can see great hit by Alf Alfonso Roundtree to jar the ball loose. And I'll tell you what, this, this Scottish Claymore defense has got an attitude, and attitude is what sets the tone on defense. Alfonso Roundtree allocated here by the Miami Dolphins, the native of Bradenton, Florida. Hutchinson, the snap count under center on second down, and the play whistle dead. So this game now has really slowed considerably, Mike. A lot of penalty markers in the second quarter. Here's Walt snap, Coleman. False start, 79 offense. Five yard penalty, still second down. And it's Peter Elisara, the left guard, moving prematurely, so it'll set the Ryan offense back five yards at the 44 yard line. Dan Daniels, the defensive coordinator for the Scottish Claymores, up high above the field here at Arena of Schalke. Hutchinson now working under center, trying to get this Rhine offense back in gear here as we approach halftime. Finds Quinney streaking over the middle. He's inside Claymores territory. Quinney brought down by the middle linebacker, Jimmy McLean. Just past that original line of scrimmage. Not much there. You know, all that was was just a simple dump crossing route in the middle to Willie Quinney. You know, they've got to stretch the field here. They've, they've got to start, again, I'm not an offensive coordinator, so I shouldn't tell them how to run their de their offense, but I'd like to see the, 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 the offense stretch their defense, the Claymore defense, a little bit more. Hutchinson, decent numbers so far, six of eight. As we approach the three-minute mark left to play in the second quarter, Hutchinson feeling the pocket start to collapse. Hit as he throws, completes to Quinney again at deep inside Claymore's territory. And Willie Quinney lunges forward inside the 30-yard line of first down and much more. Well, we just saw why Chad Hutchinson can play in the National Football League. Not only is he here in the pocket, he's in the pocket right here. He has a nice U-shape right there. He's got his receiver, Willie Quinney, in mind. He stays in there. He gets hit. Great great concentration, great execution, Chad Hutchinson. Ivory McCoy, the man who got to Hutchinson, 
But it didn't phase the Cowboys allocated quarterback. A first and 10 for Ryan from the Scotland 27 yard line. Hutchinson goes play action, sidesteps one man, fires over the middle, it's caught inside the 10 yard line. It's Daniel Wilcox, the backup tight end. And Wilcox is brought down at the seven yard line. So Hutchinson, really these last two plays making things happen showing you that poise well here we go let's watch chad right here all he does is stay in the pocket he gets some pressure by the linebacker great play chad hutchinson tremendous catch in the open field had to jump up there and get it daniel wilcox and daniel wilcox is the all-around best tight end on that team i think he's got tremendous hands he's got he can block and he can run routes better than any tight end Cowboys allocated quarterback Chad Hutchinson a long way from Dallas here in Gelsenkirchen, in Germany, trying to resurrect his professional career as the starting signal caller for Pika Harchik and the Ryan Fire. Extensive NFL experience. We mentioned last week he started those nine games, Mike, as a rookie quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys, but things changed quickly this past season once Bill Parcells took over the reins, was the number two quarterback behind Quincy Carter. And he played in just one quarter of one preseason game. But tonight, a quick start for Hutchinson, as you saw his numbers, 8 of 10 here at the start. A first and goal inside the 10 as Ryan keeps it on the ground. It's Joffrey Reynolds approaching the five-yard line, picks up about a yard and a half. Clock continues to run down to a minute 48 before halftime. Great call, I think, on running the football here with the two-minute warning. You want to use up some of the time on the clock. You don't want to allow the Scottish Claymores to get back on the field and score at the half and create a momentum into the second half. Use up most of the clock, score at the end of the half here. That gives you the momentum. You come out in the second half with a great opportunity to score another touchdown. Ryan has played this game at their pace so far. A second and goal, Reynolds. Again, over center inside the five-yard line, and Reynolds has ran very well so far tonight as he has become the new workhorse for this Ryan offense after the injury that we talked about earlier with Walter Williams. A reminder to keep it here at halftime. We will have an NFL total access piece featuring Charles Woodson. Also, a look at Mike Rucker, who is Mike for sound during a regular season game. Carolina Panthers against the Atlanta Falcons. And, of course, first-half stats and analysis as Reynolds gingerly makes his way towards the sideline. Chance to catch his breath here in a timeout call second by Chad Hutchinson and Ryan. 46 seconds left Ryan, to play in the second quarter. Second timeout. Good move by Hutchinson. And, again, we talked about as a quarterback, Mike, here in NFL Europe, a chance for a guy like Hutchinson to be involved in different game situations like this two-minute drill how to run an offense here with about 46 seconds left in this first half this will definitely test chad hutchinson his resiliency in coming off the bench in a in a in a, in a harsh situation not really harsh but you know as a quarterback you want to play every series so it's hard to get into the rhythm but here we've seen an impressive drive by chad hutchinson two great throws using up some of the time on the clock here down by the goal line uh, i'm very impressed with chad hutchinson this series talked about the fact that Hutchinson is really going to have to adjust to the fact that you know he's going to start the football game but Greg Zalman the backup is going to be given an opportunity Rusty. each and every game and Hutchinson had to sit and he's come back and he's played well here in the second quarter for Pika Harchik so a third and goal now they have it spotted inside the four yard line the man in motion is Daniel Wilcox Hutchinson Quick drop, flare pass, far side, it's incomplete. That one in and out of the hands of the running back, Jeremy Allen. And it will be fourth and goal, and the field goal unit onto the field for the Ryan Fire, but Hutchinson put it where it had to be. But I tell you, I think Jeremy Allen heard footsteps. I don't think he, he took his eyes off the ball. If you watch Jeremy Allen right here, you'll see the pass come from Hutchinson. He kind of takes his hands off the ball or his eyes off the ball. He was a little bit concerned about getting tattooed by Jimmy McLean. And, and frankly, as a running back, going out in the flat, you got to make the play. Here is Ingo Andenberg, the German national kicker, on to attempt a 20-yard field goal. Just the first field goal attempt on the season for Andenberg. Good spot. That one has the distance, and Andenberg is perfectly through the upright. So the Ryan Fire able to salvage the three points, and they build on their lead. Now a 10-3 with just a couple of seconds left before halftime. So the Ryan Fire obviously wanting to punch it in for six. 
Whitey Jordan looking on. A typical head coach or assistant coach stance there. Never shows you much emotion. Another coaching veteran here in NFL Europe has built a great relationship with his head coach and colleague, Pete Goharchik. Whitey Jordan's one of the, the, the grizzled veterans for coaches. Uh, you know, to me, uh, great job there, getting the ball down, taking the three points. Ryan Fire starts the second half with the ball, so if they can prevent Scotland from scoring here, great opportunity for a momentum charge. And for the Scottish Claymores, meantime, it's been a struggle offensively. As you get a look at Pete Koharczyk, he has to be happy with the defense. But for Jack McNell, how do you jumpstart this offense? You start the game with Nate Hibble. And you have to applaud it, Bicknell, for wanting to give his backup an opportunity. But at the same token, you want your offense to build some kind of chemistry. And that's the fine line that you walk, Mike, uh, as a coach in NFL Europe. Well, I tell you what, I, I, I think I'd give Nate Hibble the next two series. This is a must win, I think, for, for the Claymores. Uh, you know, I've talked about it. To go 0-2 with a 10-game season, and granted, there can be a 6-4 and team win the World Bowl. But, you know, you never want to go down two games 0-2. Mike Schaefer, the Buffalo Bills allocated kicker, boots it away. It's taken by Davis inside the 20, and another short kick from Schaefer, something that has really plagued this Ryan kickoff team, something we saw last week in that win against Cologne. And Davis is brought down. They'll spot it at about the 33-yard line, the tackle made by Wes Bautovich. So one final opportunity here for Kurt Eanes and this Claymore's offense. The Ryan defense here. They have to be extremely sensitive to, to the end zone here. There's no way that they can allow a big play. They've got to keep the ball from going out of bounds, take the, run the clock out, and, and just keep putting pressure on Nate Hebel. Being smart, the lone setback on first and ten for the Claymores. Here's Ains, drops back to throw. His pass through the hands of Smart. That one was nearly intercepted. As again, Kurt Ains, a good pass, but... Smart may want to take those gloves off. Well, the quarterback is Kurt Ains. I said Nate Hibble. That, that's uh, it's something that, uh, you know, looking at these guys out here and being so far away, it, it's hard to judge the numbers. But Kurt Ains, the southpaw, he's, he's going to try to see what he can do in the next 25 seconds. Ains calmly approaches the line of scrimmage. A draw play taken by Smart. The Jets allocated running back, and it's Charles Burton, Mike, who's there to lay a hard hit. And Burton, a guy who was so competitive, wanted to bounce back last week, had a couple of critical penalties. But Burton talking to Pete Kaharczyk has been one of the leaders for this Ryan defense. Well, let's watch Charles Burton right here. Uh, you know, we, we, we said last week he had kind of a tough day. Outstanding hit here. I mean, I got to tell you, that's laying the hat on, a, on an offender. That's setting the tone. Charles Burton has definitely improved his game in a week. Former star at Syracuse in upstate New York as we get a stoppage now. Game clock halted at 17 seconds left to play in this second quarter. Scottish Claymores have been in disarray offensively, trying to find some light at the end of the tunnel now as the Ryan defense able to make some substitutions, make sure that they have the right personnel in in this situation. They call it a third and seven now from the Claymore's 36-yard line. Kurt Ains, the quarterback behind center. Ian Smart again, the lone setback. Three wide receivers for Jack McNell on third down. Here is Ains. Under pressure, straight up the middle. David Thompson was there. He finds Smart out of the backfield. Smart breaks a tackle. And a nifty extra burst of effort that time from Smart as he's able to Surpassed that first down marker up towards the 45. Game clock stopped now at just five seconds left, but a great effort that time from Ian Smart. Let's watch Ian Smart here, number 30, number 35. All he does, Ains eludes the pressure. Great catch by Smart in the open field. Great acceleration there. Uh, Charles Burton missed a tackle there, but I got to tell you another thing here. Uh, the defensive lineman, Lang, Great pressure, and not only pressure, but great run to the ball. And that's the key for a defensive lineman, is to run to the ball. Olaf Lang, one of the German national players for this defensive line, backing up Sean Guthrie, getting an opportunity now for Pete Kaharczyk 
And this line defense, Kurt Ains with perhaps one final play with five seconds left to go before halftime. And a whistle stops play, a timeout called here by Ryan defensively. Third, team timeout. And that is the third and final timeout for the Ryan Fire. Apparently some confusion as to who was in the game and who was not that time. David Nugent will slowly make his way to the sideline and look at Jack McNell and the Claymore's coaching staff. A chance for Kurt Ains to regroup, make sure they have the right play called in. Scottish Claymore is something we have not talked about, Mike. Having won a football game here at Rhine the last six years. They've lost six straight games dating back to 1997. So really trying to snap a trend here on the road in what has become the toughest building to play in in all of NFL Europe here at Arena of Schalke. Ride fire in a prevent defense. Now they have three secondary players all the way back at the fire 20 yard line. Ains drops back to throw, just heave it up here, but wasn't able to get it off. It takes a hard hit as he is brought down in the backfield. David Thompson, who has had a great first half, finally is able to get on the stat sheet, comes up with a sack. Well, I'll tell you, David Thompson, David, David Thompson has decided that he wants to be the star. He wants to be the, be the first teamer. All he does is make plays. Great job, David Thompson. Bob Hart on to kick it away. Standing back deep. Shockman Davis from his own 10 yard line. Davis has a seat, bounces to the outside, out past the 30. And Shockman Davis, who had a huge day last week at 93 yard kick return against Cologne. Here's the football back to his offense in great position here to start the third quarter. Field position's the key. There's a bunch of keys we've talked about. We talked about plus minus. We talked about running the football. Field position is also another key uh, that can help your team win the football game. A short field is always nice to, to try to you know, score with rather than a long field. So Mike Pete Koharczyk has altered his substitution pattern now. We saw Greg Zolman, the backup, start the third quarter, but Zolman was inserted in that second quarter, and it is Hutchinson to start the third here. And as the fire keeping on the ground, Jeremy Allen quiet over the first two quarters tonight. Allen starts the third. Tackle made by Ryan Myers, also Jimmy McClain there on the stop. And here we can see, look at the linebackers here. Now, now we see Jeremy Allen try to make a play. Nice job, I'll tell you what, great job by the linebacking core, uh, Jimmy McClain uh, and the rest of the, the uh, Scottish Claymore linebacking core. Pickup of about three yards, it's second and seven now. Just under a minute gone by, now a fumble on the play. There was some movement prior to the snap, no penalty marker was thrown. It looked like Chad Hutchinson thought that the play was whistled dead. Not the case there. And there is a scramble for it, and it will be Ryan football. Well, that just looks like a case when Steve Grace hiked the ball way too fast. He just got antsy, hiked the ball. It's essentially a fumble, but, uh, you know, the Ryan fire recovered it, and, and obviously the Scottish Claymores tried to get it, but uh, that's, they got to get that center, the center snap down a little bit better than that. See Grace trying to... Protect his quarterback, Hutchinson now under center on third and eight. On the Rhine 38-yard line, Hutchinson throws out of the pocket, finds Quinney, cuts back out of the 45-yard line, and Quinney inside Scotland territory. And we've talked about Quinney's speed and quickness, and right there, that ability, Mike, to just change direction on a dime. Well, all it was was a quick out to Willie Quinney, and this is where Willie Quinney's athleticism prevailed here. If you see here, here's Willie Quinney right here. Just come, just coming out for the quick out. He's in the open field, and whenever you have to tackle a guy like Willie Quinney in the open field, I don't know if you can do it, and, and clearly uh, that's virtually impossible with a guy like Willie Quinney. Quinney, a touchdown reception last week. Here is the tight end, Blakely, making the reception on first down. Chad Hutchinson in this Ryan offense trying to keep things moving now. A 10-3 lead in the early stages of this second half. And you can see here why getting three points or a touchdown at the end of the first half is imperative when you get out and you get a chance to start the second half on offense. 
if Chad Hutchinson can run the offense and go down the field and score, there's a 10-point turnaround right there, per perhaps two touchdowns with a 14-point turnaround. Hutchinson working under center, a three-wide receiver set. Allen takes the handoff, bounces ah, inside the 40, down. and again close to that first down marker. This Claymore is defense now. Has been on the field for a long time tonight. There have been a lot of three and outs for the Claymores offensively. And now Chad Hutchinson in this Ryan offense starting to take command. Okay, let's watch Kevin Breedlove right here. He's a right guard and the, and the tackle, uh, Melvin Page. Great job on the end there. All they do is just open a hole and it allows Jeremy Allen to run right up the field. Great job with the offensive line setting the tempo. So Jeremy Allen a chance to be the workhorse now out of the backfield to start the third quarter allocated by the San Francisco 49ers. Hutchinson through the air on first down inside the 35 yard line down to the 33. It's Blakely the tight end with another reception. Blakely a guy who really has learned this Pete Koharchik system play for the fire last season as well. You watch Blakely there on the right side. It just comes a quick middle dig has to go down low for the for the grab. Blakely is a consummate tight end. He's a pure tight end and at one tight end offense. Blakely allocated by the Tennessee Titans, just 24 years of age. Here is Allen again out of the backfield on second and five. And Jeremy Allen that time, maybe a yard and a half there. Good pursuit that time by Cedric Scott, the interior defensive tackle allocated by the Cleveland Browns. Also Nick Easton there defensively. Claymores need a stop here. They have to hold Ryan to a field goal, if that, because the Claymores offense has really been sluggish so far tonight. Hutchinson under center. Very patient running this offense. Play clock down to one second, and Hutchinson did not get it off. It will be a delay of game penalty. That time, a little bit too patient running the offense and we mentioned earlier as we get Prior the call the here snap, from Walt Coleman delay of the game offense five yard penalty still third down Mike we touched earlier on the fact that Cleveland Browns have been very active in the allocation process a look at the players involved in tonight's game on both sides the quarterback Nate Hibble Cedric Scott whom we just heard from and then on the Ryan sideline Joffrey Reynolds and Claybowl the offensive tackle well, I got to tell you, the Cleveland Browns have to be happy with those four guys tonight. They're all playing very well. And the Browns have been in the news the past couple of days. Carmen Policy announcing that he will step down out of his front office position. Deep throw from Hutchinson intended for Herzing in the end zone. And a couple of late penalty markers are thrown. There was tight coverage that time. Gerald Dixon, the man who was there. I'm kind of surprised that they went to Adam Herzig here on the, on the nine route or the go route. Just to light it up, I, I'd, I'd look to see Willie Quinney make that, you know, run that particular route and get that ball thrown to him. And it is a pass interference penalty against the Scottish Claymores. That is a back-breaking infraction as you get a look at Gerald Dixon trying to plead his case. Watch Adam Herzig. He's got Dixon beat here, but... Dixon just has to grab the arm before the ball gets there. He knows he's beat. He tried. He, he, he thought he could get away with it. Mike, that's a bad call. You have to give uh, a defensive player an opportunity to feel out the offensive player. That time, didn't really push, didn't really redirect Herzing in his route. That's exact. He, he didn't look back. And as a result, you're going to get the f flag thrown at you every time. So Ryan gets the break there. It sets up a first and goal after the interference penalty. But Ryan loses yardage on first down as Allen is chopped down in the backfield or around the 10-yard line. And that'll set up a first and goal now, a second and goal rather, as they spot it just inside the 10. Cedric Scott there, he, you know, he's property of the Cleveland Browns, as we showed earlier, decided to take Pita Alessara and put him in the backfield. Cedric Scott has just played tremendous all game, but again, we're down in the red zone. The Ryan Fire must score here. Hutchinson working under center on second and goal. Fires end zone caught. Willie Quinney touchdown. All Willie Quinney runs here is a simple post pattern, and he and he beats Jermaine Chapman on the on the post. 
patterns. Basically one of one of Chad's favorite patterns to throw to. He mentioned that to us in his meeting last week. Now, Willie Quinney has been very active tonight. Special teams and also is one of the top wide receiving threats. And right there, Chad Hutchinson finds his man. A nine-yard touchdown reception by Willie Quinney. And now the German national Ingo Andenbrug on for the point after attempt. Wes Bautovich, the backup linebacker, serving as the holder. And Andenbrug puts it through. Both teams went on to swap punts, so we pick up the action on Scotland's ensuing drive. Here is Galloway taking the handoff from Nate Hibble. And Mike, something we haven't talked about as this Scottish Playmore's offense continues to struggle, the instability they've had to deal with along the offensive line. Hey, slow right on cue, Chad Ward there with a great lead block as we get a look at the replay, but they have had a lot of change to deal with up front. Great lead block there on Dave Nugent, allowed Ahmad Galloway to get through the hole and get five, six yards. Great job, nice job. The offensive line has to set the tempo here for Scotland. Kurt McGill, the center, a late acquisition at the end of training camp as Hibble. And Scotland again keeps it on the ground with Galloway. A minimal gain on second down. It'll set up a third and about five coming up. Tackle made by Dave Nugent. Again, defensive line penetration will hurt a running game all day long. It's imperative. I mean, absolutely imperative for this Scottish claim more offensive line to establish a new line of scrimmage here on the road. If you can win on the road and win at home, you have a great shot at winning the World Bowl. Game clock continues to run now down to 4.17 in this third quarter. Draw play, Galloway breaks the tackle as he bounces out towards the 43-yard line. And that'll be very close to the first down marker. And Walt Coleman signaling that Galloway does have enough yardage. So finally, something for the Claymores to build on offensively. Well, and, and they can build on Ahmad Galloway. He's starting to run hard. We saw in this series, he had two nice runs. And he's starting to set the tone for himself and his team here on the road. Galloway, 24 years of age, the Tennessee native, allocated here by the Denver Broncos, the former seventh round draft pick of the Broncos back in 2003. The screen pass, again, they go to Galloway, who's been the featured player out of the backfield on this drive. And there is a look at Sam Ritigliano, the man behind the window frame there to the right side of your monitor, the offensive assist. Dan Daniel working the phone. There's Sam trying to hide behind that frame. Continues to call the majority of the offensive plays for this Scotland offense. Again, it's Galloway on second down. That cutback move as Galloway approaches midfield. It'll set up a third and about seven coming up. Tackle made by Ua Tulatelli. Well, Sam Ritigliano, excuse me, Mike, one of the more colorful personalities you will talk with yesterday really coming out with the quote of the week as we asked him about his quarterbacks Nate Hibble and the backup Kurt Ains said that quarterbacks are like tea bags they don't know what you have until you put them in hot water and they're in some hot water right now Hibble drops back to throw on third down fires over the middle and Hibble responds in that situation it's Scott McCready it looks like inside the Rhine 45 yard line and a much needed first down for the Scotland offense. Nate Hibble is a cool customer. All he's, do, all he's doing right now is commanding his offense here. You know, I look for Nate Hibble here to make some plays even in, in the plus, plus yardage zone. We talked to him yesterday. He's cool, he's calm, he's smart. Uh, you know, they're not out of this game yet. Very heady play by McCready there as you saw the replay just found that seam inside Ryan territory. Hibble fires over the middle, it's intercepted. Picked off by Abdul Howard inside Scotland territory. Breaks a tackle, and Howard, two men to beat, he's gone. Well, I've talked about it, and we talked about Abdul last week. Should have had an interception in the end zone last week. Here he is this week, steps up, interception, touchdown return, great job. Abdul Howard, uh, you know, anytime you can turn the ball over what I've said, I've said it once, I'll say it a thousand times. Turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. Turnovers to score, that's even better. Ab 
Abdul Howard, 79 yards on the interception return. And he has busted this game wide open. As this crowd here at Gelsenkirchen up on its feet. The German national lingo and in Brug, the left-footed German kicker on for the point after attempts. And he is perfectly through the upright. So the Rhine fire in complete command now. They extend their lead to 24 to 3 against Jack Bicknell, Scottish Claymores. Nate Hibble forces the ball here in cover two and just overthrows his receiver, puts it right in the hands of Abdul Howard. It's a very bad place for Nate Hibble to put it in the hands of an opponent in the, safe, in the safety's hands. Abdul Howard decides to run it back. He wants to take it to the house. He did. He opened the door and closed it behind him. Nice job, Abdul Howard. And Mike, to the defensive Nate Hibble in this Scotland offense, it's so difficult to put the offense together, as we mentioned last week. Such a short training camp. These players and these teams are thrown together so quickly. You have a month training camp in Tampa, Florida, then the long trip overseas, as we talked about last week. You miss about six days a week of practice, and you expect the defense to be ahead of the offense at this early pace of the season. So a lot to work on if you're Jack McNell, Nate Hibble, and this Claymore's offense. Well, you know, Abdul Howard loves to repeat himself. He's like history. He did this last year against Scotland. But earlier we were talking about how teams, and you just mentioned, the teams are put together quick. The offensive line for the Scottish Claymores was just put together the last 10, 15 days. That's not enough time to gel, but that's no excuse. They still need to execute and perform. Abdul Howard had a long interception return for a touchdown here against the Scottish Claymores last season. Does it again here tonight as Nick Davis returns out past the 25-yard line. And here was the scene last season. Abdul Howard, a play very reminiscent of the play we just saw, picking off Shane Stafford, a 93-yard interception return for six points. Something about those white and silver uniforms that brings out the best in Abdul Howard. I'll tell you, anytime you can make big plays, uh, and, and Abdul Howard has today, he's, he's played very well and he's improved since last week. It's only going to help your team and help you win. Abdul Howard, the second season under Pete Goharczyk for this Ryan defense. Here is Maurice Hicks, the backup running back who has been very quiet tonight. Hicks ran very well last week in that loss in Berlin. But it has been a different story so far tonight. Tacklers on the play, Chris Demery and Abdul Howard. Mike, where do you start if you're Jack McNell? How do you work your offense back into this game? Well, you might have to go to the air now, be, you know, being down uh, 21 points. They're, they're down three touchdowns. They're obviously going to have to get the ball into the end zone. Uh, and, and running the football may not be the answer, uh, especially with this Ryan defensive front seven that's played exceptional. And it's Maurice Hicks on the ground there, able to move the chains. Brought down just shy of the 40-yard line. Again, it's Abdul Howard on the stop. Also, Tony Lukens there. Interesting play call here as Scotland might keeping it on the ground here. Final seconds of the third quarter, you're down 21 points. I try, you know, I don't know if I'd run, but but I think what they're doing here, and, and they're trying to get a safety to come up in the box. They're trying to get eight in the box to try to open up the passing game to score quickly. Terrence Robinson showing blitz now for Ryan. Now back pedals and again approaches the line of scrimmage. Here comes Robinson. Hibble drops back to throw. High pass is caught far side of the field by Ron Bellamy inside Ryan territory. And another first down for the Claymore's offense. Game clock is down to nine seconds. Nate Hibble better throw that ball a little earlier because I'll tell you what, that ball was going to get picked off by Earthwood Moreland. And if it was picked off, Here's another six points going to the house. So Ron Bellamy onto the stat sheet, his first reception tonight. He had one catch last week in Berlin. 22-year-old wide receiver allocated here by the Miami Dolphins. And the remaining seconds tick off the game clock. That is the as the third the quarter run. expires here in Gelsenkirchen. So Jack McNell's Clay Morris tries
We welcome you back. The Scottish Claymore is keeping it on the ground on first down with Maurice Hicks, a pickup of about four yards. As we welcome you back inside Arena Alf Schalke here in Gelsenkirchen, Germany. Week two of the NFL Europe League season. The Scottish Claymores have been dominated so far tonight by Ryan trailing this game 24 to 3. Hibble here on second down. He loads the rush, keeps it himself as he slides down right at that first down marker at about the 35 yard line. And Hibble, good decision that time. Didn't see anything Mike downfield, but likes to keep it himself. You know, great decision here by, by the quarterback Hibble. Nice job, Nate Hibble. Drops back in the pocket. There's nothing open. There's a hole. Well, I might as well just look to run it here and get 10 yards. Nice job, Nate Hibble. That's the way to go. Good decision. Didn't quite have that first down, so they called it third and about a yard here. Here is Hicks taking the handoff right up the middle. Ah! And Hicks approaching the 30-yard line. So Scotland able to keep the chains moving now. They'll have it first and 10 at about the Ryan 31-yard line. And Hicks in that backup running back position behind Amon Galloway. But if you go by performance, what we saw last week and so far tonight, Hicks has been their best runner, Mike. I think so, too. I totally agree. I think the San Francisco 49ers are going to be very happy when they look at this film and, and if they do look at this film. But, but Hicks just has an attitude. It's third and short. I'm going to pick up the first down. He picked up four or five yards. Great job, Maurice Hicks. And we should also talk about that offensive line as you get a look at Cedric Killings. Maybe he'll to catch his breath, makes his way to the sideline. That's a big boy. Well, he, some water. I, I think he's a little tired. He's uh, He's got some canal water in his lungs there. It's, he, he needs to take a break. So Killings replaced by David Thompson. Hibble steps up in the pocket, flushes out, finds Hicks on that flare pass. And Maurice Hicks is lowering his shoulder right at the first down marker. He may be about a half yard short. James Harrison and Tony Lukens, the defenders have forced him out. I'll tell you, Mar Maurice Hicks is making a, a, creating an opportunity for him with the 49ers here. Nate Hibble also, I would like to, to mention, did a great job in the pocket, great awareness, dumped it out to his back, Hicks. There's a good eight, nine yards for a pickup. Great job. And Hicks, of course, looking forward to training camp with the 49ers later this summer. You see where he stands on the depth chart. Here is Davis on the play, end around play, the reverse. Davis had it knocked out, and then it is recovered there at the 20-yard line. And so the Scottish Claymore is fortunate to retain possession. It was Ron Bellamy who fell on the football. Well, all we're going to see here, just look in this general vicinity of the screen. We have to, Ron Bellamy here makes a great block. I'll tell you what, if, if Nick Davis decides to stay outside, I feel he can pick up more yards. Uh, great block, Ron Bellamy, but learn to stay outside Nick Davis. Davis, just 24 years of age, allocated here by the Miami Dolphins. Hibble facing a blitz now on first down, fires over the middle of the field, come next to his man. It's Bellamy again inside the five. As that time, Bellamy isolated Mike against Lukens. Well, here we go. We, there we go. He's, he's on the outside. All he's going to do is run a post pattern on T. Luke in cover two. It's virtually impossible for Tony Lukens to cover him on that. It's a great, great throw and catch to Bellamy from Nate Hibble. Bellamy last year on that Dolphins practice squad re-signed on the 30th of December. They keep it on the ground. It hits its charge loose into the end zone. There's a mad scramble for it. Still no call, and finally they signal it is Ryan football. Well, unfortunately for, for Maurice Hicks, this is something that's going to tarnish his resume in today's game. Turnovers, fumbles. Can't First fumble the ball as a running back. So Maurice Six dejectedly will walk his way back to that Scotland sideline. Oh, it's been a productive night so far defensively for Abdul Howard, to say the least. Already, Mike, a 79-yard interception to return for a touchdown and a moment ago. Jars the football loose from Maurice Hicks. There, the man on the right side of your screen. There is Jack McNell. Get a look at the replay in a moment. Here is Hutchinson now working under center on first down. There's Ryan in cruise control right now, leading this game 24 to 3. But Mike, take us through this last play defensively for the fire. Well, Abdul Howard just decides that he wants to take over the game, and you'll see him come in right out on the outside. 
He has to keep his outside shoulder free. Excellent tackle. That's a picture perfect textbook tackle. I'm a coach in high school. I would put this film up to show my guys this is how you tackle. Great job, Abdul Howard. You're having a fantastic game tonight. Hutchinson now under center. Again, it's Jeremy Allen. A lone setback for Ryan offensively. Allen trying to break a tackle, tripped up. Uh, past the 20 yard line. Davin Walls, the man who got the hand on Allen that time. Well, clearly, what we can see here, uh, Spiro, all Ryan is going to do now is just run the clock down. They're going to run the football, try to get first downs, try to keep Nate Hibble and the Scottish Claymores off the field. And, and and close the close the chapter, close this second chapter in a ten chapter book. 24-3 lead for Ryan trying to start this 2004 season with a second consecutive victory. They beat the Cologne Centurions last weekend. Here is Chris Lease, oh. the backup wide receivers making a catch along that right sideline, pushed out right at the first down marker, spotted down at the 30. Still no signal yet. The officials may want to bring out the chains crew. Take another look at Lee's working along the sidelines. And the person holding that first down marker has to be careful there along the sideline. Not much room to work with. I've seen a couple of knees get blown out in my career. It's uh it's not funny, but but it is funny at the same time. It, it's not funny for the guy getting hurt. But it's some of the greatest hits are on the sidelines with chain crews, camera guys. Uh, you know, you've seen them. It's, it's, it's outstanding. So you would classify someone standing on the sideline getting whacked as a great hit. And the chains crew is brought out now as the officials have it spotted with the nose of the football touching the 30-yard line. So they are about it an inch or so short. The Ryan offense off the field. It will be Brooks Bernard on to kick it away here on fourth and inches. No reason for Pete Kaharchik to roll the dice here with his team leading this game by 21 points. Back team to return is Ian Smart standing at the Claymore's 25-yard line. Bernard allocated here by the Chicago Bears. I'll tell you, a punter there. Look at Bernard. He's got some pipes on him, doesn't he? Bernard stands firm in his own 15-yard line. Has been one of the more impressive kickers a week and a half into this season. And right on cue, a short wobbling kick, but it takes a Ryan bounce picked up by Smart at his own 30-yard line. Moves laterally, didn't pick up much yardage there. And Smart is brought down just inside that 30-yard line. Football fans think you know who the stars of the 2004 NFL Europe League season are going to be? Well, now you have the chance to prove it by playing Fantasy NFL Europe at NFLEurope.com backslash fantasy. And the season has the competition's highest score, and you'll be on your way to the 2005 Pro Bowl in Hawaii. So we'll see if you have what it takes when the competition kicks off in week number three. I know you're going to be very active on that NFLEurope.com website when you get back home later this week. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to use my computer. We've been in Germany. They don't have high-speed internet here. <laughs> they do it, so it's a little different than what I'm used to. Here's Nate Hibble back onto the field under center. And again, Scotland electing to keep it on the ground here with just over nine minutes left to play. And this Claymore's team in a three-touchdown hole. Two Atelli among the tacklers. They're the middle linebacker. Total yardage very close tonight. But it has been a different story on the scoreboard. Ryan has been dominant. And a low throw that time from Hibble. And, and clear with himself. Clearly, the difference here in, in what you just talked about is even though the yardage is the same, big plays. Big plays have been the difference here. Executing, getting into the end zone with the Ryan Fire team. Uh, they've been stingy on defense, as we saw Abdul Howard make a beautiful interception for a touchdown. Chad Hutchinson developed a drive and scored. They're just outplaying the Scottish Claymores. Ian Smart, the Jets allocated, running back the lone setback, standing about five yards back of Hibble. Here is Hibble now on third and long lookout, takes a hard hit from the blind side. 
He never saw Chris Demery coming. I'll tell you, Reese Hicks just got beat here. He's not allocated by any NFL team. And with that type of play, he might never be allocated. But he's got to be better than that on the right side. And, and Chris Demery decided he's going to rush the corner and dominate the corner and lay a wood, laid some wood on the quarterback. And I'll tell you what, that's a picture perfect pass rush move. Mike, it was Marcus Ogden, the injured Claymore's player that time. They're starting left tackle up front. As Demery and the quarterback just fell on the knee that time of Ogden, who had to be helped to the sideline. Meantime, Chris Demery, a lot to smile about on that Ryan sideline. The defense has been dominant tonight. A blocked punt as Murphy has it blocked at the 10-yard line. Murphy picks it up, and then he's brought down to the end zone. Now, the officials are going to say that he was down at the one-yard line. We'll see where they spot it. But it was Charles Drake who got the hand on the block. And when it rains, it pours for this Scotland football team. And it is pouring cats and dogs. This, this seems to me that it's Murphy's law here. When everything's going wrong, it's just going wrong. And that's what's happening for the Scottish Claymores here. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what. The defensive line of the Ryan Fire has taken over this football game. And they deserve all the credit. Not only is this a team win so far, but clearly the defensive line for the Ryan First, Fire has been out. the difference. Ryan. Now here you go. Here are the defensive linemen right here. You got David Thomas here, David Nugent here, Cedric Killings there. These guys are tired, but they've put a full night's work in. They've got about eight more minutes to go, uh, but great job. Great job, Ryan defensive line. Got some big guys there. Dave Tom, look at the pipes on David Thomas right there. I wish I had pipes like that. But, uh, you know, again, Spiro, this line, the defensive line, and I talked about you have to win the front line of any war. The Ryan Fire in this battle right here has won on the defensive line against the Scottish Claymore offensive line. Mike, is there a better feeling? You played this game for 11 years in the NFL. Let's get a look at Pete Kaharczyk, who has to be extremely pleased, the former defensive coordinator in NFL Europe. And there's Adrian White, the defensive coordinator. They have put in so much work, and to see that work pay off the way it has tonight, there's no better feeling. No better feeling. You know Adrian, he's the defensive coordinator and uh, defensive back coach. They're, they're, they're just happy. They're, they're happier than pigs in a big pile of mud. Joffrey Reynolds keeps it on the ground on first and goal. So the ride fire in the driver's seat right now. A chance to build on a three touchdown lead here in their home stadium. And Greg Zolman, the Buffalo Bills allocated quarterback. Another opportunity back into the game, replacing Chad Hutchinson, who also had a stellar game tonight here in week number two. There's positives all up and down this roster tonight for the Ryan Fire. High formation set now with Allen in front of Reynolds in the backfield. Adam Herzing, the man in motion. Zolman takes the snap. They give his to Reynolds, and he lowers his shoulder into the end zone. Touchdown! All they did is just run a quick dive play. It's just a smash mouth. They're in two tight ends, what we like to call Tiger. And if you look right here in this part of the screen, he's just gonna, they're just going to uproot pace, uproot the guys out of there. And he, he does cut back to the right side a little bit. But this play right here is all about attitude. It's, do you want to get in the end zone? And if I'm the defense, do I want to prevent them from getting in the end zone? Second touchdown run of the night by the Cleveland Browns allocated runner. Joffrey Reynolds has been the starter suddenly after the injury to Walter Williams last week. Ingo Andenbrug again is perfect on the extra point. And the Ryan Fire, a team that really was the favorite at the start of the season to win the World Bowl championship tonight. Showing you reasons why that's been the case. A major lead here, 31-3 in Gelsenkirchen. All smiles on that sideline. Joffrey Reynolds, the starting running back. Two touchdown runs tonight. All part of a commanding 31-3 lead for Pete Koharczyk's Ryan Fire here in their home building, Arena of Schalke, the cheering section. 
very upbeat and enthusiastic tonight. All part of a very festive atmosphere here in Gelsenkirchen, Germany. Another great crowd as Ryan wrapping up this two-game homestand to start this 2004 season. Mike Schaefer on the kickoff. And it will be decent field position for the Scottish Claymores. And one injury note as we update those of you watching at home. Starting left offensive tackle Marcus Ogden will not return like that right knee injury and certainly will be reevaluated after x-rays and perhaps an MRI tomorrow. And now Tom Arth, the third string quarterback allocated by the Indianapolis Colts. Opportunity to come in and show what he could do because nothing else has worked tonight. Jack McNell figures why not. First time we've seen Arth this season. And why not give him an opportunity to play? Arth on the draw play. It's Ian Smart. Jets allocated running back. Smart. A very impressive showing last week in Berlin in the loss for the Claymores. And even in a blowout situation, that's the uniqueness of an NFL Europe. These guys are here to try to get some reps, try to prove themselves, and try to build that resume tape, have something to show their NFL teams later this summer. Here is Arth now on second down and long. Time leading his man smart a little bit too much. It'll be third and long coming up. And one of the things I want to build on what you said is, and it's so true, even though this is a 31-3, uh, the, the Ryan Fires leading 31-3, all these players need to give effort. If I'm, a, if I'm an NFL scout or an NFL team looking at my guy, I want to make sure my man's going to play for 60 minutes, and that's what the Ryan Fire needs to do, play for 60 minutes. Tom Marthy, Westlake, Ohio native, flushed out of the pocket on third and eight. Look out, he has four Rhine defenders chasing him, and Arth is finally brought down in a heap there at the 40-yard line. So Tom Arth with an opportunity here in the closing minutes. Get some reps for this Scotland offense. A similar trend continuing, and another three and out for the Scotland offense as Arth will make his way to the sideline under six minutes now left to play in regulation a 31-3 Ryan advantage Nick Murphy on to punt it away at his lock last attempt blocked by Henri Childs this one he gets off a fair catch called by Willie Quinney at the 25 yard line and Mike Lodish the theme of this game big plays whether it be that interception return for the touchdown by Abdul Howard you see the blocked punt tonight, a forced fumble by Howard as well in the red zone, but so many big plays to talk about for this Ryan football team. And when, where does it stem from? What I talked about earlier, turnovers, the plus-minus ratio. It, it, it's, it's, it's extremely important for a team to understand that when you can take the ball away and score and convert points, you're virtually going to win every football game if you do that. Ryan staying with Greg Zolman in this situation with this game. First, all but decided. Timeout. And a timeout called here by the Scottish Claymores. Game clock stopped at 5.42 left to play in this fourth quarter. And Ryan leading 31 to 3. And here is a look at some other scores around NFL Europe tonight. The Frankfurt Galaxy, a team also trying to improve to 2-0 after their win last week. As the expansion Cologne Centurions in Cologne tonight. Galaxy with a 2010 lead in the fourth quarter, and the Berlin Thunder a 28 10 lead in Amsterdam tonight. So there could very well be three 2 0 teams entering play next weekend. Meantime, the Rhine Fire fans. Sighting. There. Young fella showing the 84 Vikings jersey. It's amazing the football IQ of these fans, not only here in Germany, but all around Europe, as this game of American football, as they call it here in Europe, has really caught fire. Not only here in Dusseldorf, Germany, but in all six NFL Europe League cities. Ron keeps it on the ground on first down. Jeremy Allen. Tackle made that time by Ivory McCoy. Well, the one nice thing that I'm seeing with, with Scottish Claymores, 
they're playing hard still. I mean, they're obviously out of the football game with five minutes to go at 31 to three. Uh, and, and we talked earlier, these guys need to keep the motor running. They need to go for 60 minutes, even though they're getting blown out. They need to show the character of the athlete that they are and that, that they're willing to go 110%. Play clock winding down to two seconds. Zolman hands to Allen, breaks one tackle, and Allen is bowling his way up the middle, up past the 40-yard line. Ball was knocked loose, but after Allen made contact with the ground, and again, it was Ivory McCoy there. McCoy has been one of the few bright spots up front along that front four for Scotland tonight. You see right here, it's great hit, it, and, and we're not really sure if it was a fumble or not. No, clearly the ground, the ground caused that fumble right there, and that, that's, that, that should be the Ryan Fire ball, which it is. Great call by the officials. There is McCoy, a free agent, former star at Michigan State, just 25 years of age, played five different defensive positions, we should point out, as a member of the Michigan State Spartans. Again, Ryan keeps it on the ground as Pete Koharczyk. The opportunity here down the stretch to mix and match, give some of his second and third string players an opportunity. The tackle made that time by Brad Franklin. Well, the one important thing that, that Ryan needs to do is they definitely need to get a first down here. There's 352 left in the game. If they run the ball and run the ball, they don't get a first down. It gives the Claymores an opportunity to get back and score. Even though they're out of the football game, they still want to end this game with the ball. Jeremy Allen has it on second down and long. Brought down just short of the 45-yard line. So a win tonight by the Ryan Fire. And if the Frankfurt Galaxy can hold on, Mike, it'll set up a very interesting matchup next weekend in Frankfurt between the Fire and the Galaxy. Let's get another look at the replay from Allen. And there is Adam Dirty, the man making the stop. One of the national players defensively for this Claymore is defense, the British national, 24 years of age. Duran Roundtree. Tell you what, you're looking at Pete Kaharczyk here, and being the defensive-minded coach that he is, you, you, you can't tell me that you can't tell me that he's not excited about this. Total yards allowed last week, 328. Tonight, 170 yards. Tremendous improvement. It was a football coach that's all you ask for. Your players and teams improve over the course of the regular season. But from week one to week two, we have seen dramatic improvements for Ryan up and down the roster, as we talked about. Now, last week, special teams are the difference. Tonight, we've seen special teams, but the offense and defensive play from Ryan has been stellar here tonight. Zolman again hands to Jeremy Allen. And Allen lowers his shoulders. Up past midfield inside Claymore's territory. And this will be very close to that first down marker. They needed to get to the Scotland 49-yard line. Tackle made by Gavin Walls. I'll tell you, Joffrey Reynolds and Jeremy Allen have done a great job on the ground tonight for, for the Ryan Fire. Uh, again, we're going to look at this. They're going to try to get the first down. Do you go for it here on fourth down, or do you punt the ball? Personally, I go for it here. Up 31-3, you go for it? Yeah, why not? Why wouldn't you? With this little time left, well, you know what? I want to control the ball. I'm not saying I'm going to go to the end zone if I make the first down. Ryan, 30 seconds, timeout. So Ryan looks as though they're not only going to go for it, they're going to call a timeout and make sure they have the right personnel on the field. This is, this is what you call <laughs> putting the nail in the coffin right here. This is extremely... This is this is disciplined football. The Scotland fans have some of the most loyal fans in all of NFL Europe. And we had the chance to meet some of these fans here yesterday at the team hotel there in Dusseldorf, what, Germany. I'm what do you not call sure this you guy? Call the, Ma the Mad Hatter? The, the male? The, ma the male version of the Chiquita banana? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know what you call it. I'll go with the look at the nose on that guy, though. I gotta tell you what, that's an interesting hat. We we met this guy in the uh, when we when we met with the Scottish Claymores. This guy right here, I think, could play some football. He's about six four, about three hundred and ten pounds. I wonder how much that hat weighs. And there, the Ryan mascot. Not sure if he could play football there as he tries to work his way over the padding there. A lot of interesting. Now this is wear here tonight. Yeah, this is interesting right here. 
This is a version of a cone head. A German version of a cone head. On fourth down, Ryan appears as though they will have enough to move the chains inside the 49-yard line. Greg Zolman electing to keep it himself as the game clock now stopped at three minutes and three seconds left. So Greg Zolman, the Buffalo Bills allocated quarterback, the number two man behind Chad Hutchinson. And now the chains drew out to measure. Just to be on the safe side, they determined that the fire did have enough yardage, so it will be a first and ten now as they have it just inside that Scotland 49-yard line. All's fair in love and war here. Hey, you got to play 60 minutes, and uh, the fat lady could sing, but it doesn't look like it. She might be leaving the building right now for the Scottish Claymores, that is. There's some Eddie interesting... Ryan fans in the seats, and these fans know how to party. Make no mistake about it. A lot of chanting and dancing. I'm sure a lot of these fire fans will hop on the bus, and get on the Autobahn, and make the trip to Frankfurt next weekend. And speaking of the Autobahn, I'd like to point out that my life did flash before my eyes earlier this afternoon. Our producer, no. Don Bowie, and our director, Fran Morrison, elected to hand the car keys to Mike Lodish, knowing full well that how they didn't have to be in the that? car. It was only me, the passenger. They didn't care. Hey, Mike Lodish doing about a buck that? 30 on the Autobahn earlier today. In Terrible. a minivan, nonetheless. I was Impressive trying... brakes, though. Impressive brakes. We almost got into an accident. He is right because of the brakes. We saw a couple of BMWs and Mercedes-Benz just whizzing by in that left lane. Couldn't even tell you what color they were as Ryan keeps it on the ground here on second down. They busted inside the 40-yard line. Laurent Marceline, the French national, 25 years of age. That's good for another fire first down. Late fourth quarter action here in Gelsenkirchen, Germany. The fans wanted defense, and the fire have certainly provided that so far tonight. Pete Koharczyk, the Ryan head coach, and who knows a thing or two about defense, a longtime defensive coordinator in NFL Europe. And on the other side, Jack McNell, as we mentioned, 40 plus years of football coaching at the collegiate level, 18 years at Boston College, among other stops. Of course, in his first season, as we talked about earlier at the helm of the Scottish Claymores, and certainly a lot to work on for this Scotland team entering week three next Saturday. Zolman is brought down in the backfield before the handoff. And how about that play by Cedric Scott? Oh, the interior defensive tackle. I would lay a hand on him that time. Well, all he did here is shoot the gap right here. Cedric Scott, no one blocked him. That's a miscommunication by the offensive line. Uh, poor job by the offensive line there, but Cedric Scott, like I said, he's going to play for 60 minutes, and he's going to do the best he can. He wants his team back home, the Cleveland Browns, to be proud of him, even though he's losing 31-3. to proud of, he want, They want him to be proud and strong for 60 minutes. Cedric Scott, the Gulfport, Mississippi native, former fourth-round draft pick of the New York Giants, Back in 2001, on second and long, it's Marceline again on the handoff from Zolman. Tackle made by J.J. Jones. It's been a quiet game tonight for Jones, that starting outside linebacker for Scotland. As the official spot it now down at the 45-yard line. Final 55 seconds left to play in regulation. Zolman lines up under center. Here is Marceline on the handoff. Not much room to work with. Tonight's game produced by Don Bowie and directed by Fran Morrison. Our associate director, Wayne Wilson. Broadcast associate, Brian Biederman. And the director of production for NFL Europe, Jacob Ullman. Also a special thanks to our technical crew from Cine Video Group. And Mike, this is our last stint here in NFL Europe. And Sure I speak hopefully, for you and hopefully we not say thank last. you to the entire crew for Fox and the NFL Network. It's been a great couple of weeks here in Germany and had a chance to visit Amsterdam. This was a lot of fun. This has been a great time. And I'd also like to thank the people at the Relaxa Hotel and all the German people that have been so nice to us. Uh, and, and with the language barrier, there's not a lot of people that speak English here, but we got by and, you know, the German people are quite, quite friendly and, and, and very... Uh, very hospitable, if you will. And Mike had a chance to work on his German, but 
Of course, the more important business, the Ryan Fire, a second straight victory to start this 2004 NFL Europe League season behind Chad Hutchinson tonight. Abdul Howard, a monster defensive game for Pete Kaharchik and the Fire. And the end result up on your screen, 31-3.